Hey guys, Kate here. Um, I know I am a day early for Hunter Happy Hour. We usually do Thursdays at around noon Eastern. Um, I have some family stuff going on. I might need to fly out tomorrow, so I wanted to make sure I got this in this week. Um, I'm a little out of it, so give me a second. Um, so we got a few topics today uh, that are really good ones. Um, I've also gotten a lot of email questions from you guys who got my email yesterday. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, I'll be carrying those questions into next week because we did get a lot of them. So if I don't answer your question, just reach out, let me know, and I will do it next week. Um, one of the things I wanted to cover today that a lot of people have been asking about are transitions between songs. So I know a lot of us use the crossfade feature. Um, I think there's something similar with Apple Music. I love that feature. It helps you kind of keep out that negative empty energy in between songs. Um, a lot of people don't like to use it, that's fine. Uh, instead, maybe talking through it, so getting them ready, setting them up for the next ride. The last thing you want is pure silence and no guidance at all. So if people finish a song, a heavy hill, you bring them down to the saddle, it gets quiet, you get quiet, they're kind of looking around like what next and they probably push up from the handlebars take a little break even if they didn't necessarily need it so i like to tell people always at the beginning of class to take breaks as they need them throughout class it's their class it's their time to do it i'm going to keep pushing them so they have to decide when they want that that break i'm never going to tell them take your break right here um, sometimes if you see people need it you can remind them during class that they can take that break but it really breaks apart the energy in the class and it doesn't necessarily do you any good as an instructor to keep them engaged so those transitions between songs if you're not using crossfade uh, a great way to know how to handle the transition is to know exactly where you are in your song when it's about to end and what's coming next. So you can't really handle the transition and get them ready for the next song if you don't really know what's coming next and you're waiting to hear that song come on to remind yourself, oh yeah, this is what I'm gonna do here. So um, just really know your playlist and think about strategically, think about what song goes after the next and how listen to how it ends and how the next one begins. That will help you figure out how you're gonna transition them. I really do think transitions are important. Again, people, if they don't know what's coming next, that's gonna be their cue to take a break. Um, and they might not even need it, like I said. So it's important to uh, think about that as you're building your playlist and think about how you're gonna handle those transitions from one hill to a run or to a recovery or whatever it is. Um, we can talk more about that. Sorry, these, I don't know what's going on with my phone. Um, we can talk more about that. If you guys have questions specifically about transitions, let me know. If you wanna post um, a couple songs and we can talk about how you transition in between them, that would be awesome too. So let me know uh, what more you wanna talk about in regards to transitioning and we can go there. Um, for now, I'm just gonna keep it kind of basic. Um, another thing I want to talk about today, I think it was Amber, um, has her own studio. Congrats, Amber. I don't know how long you said you've had it, but that's awesome regardless. You're still going, so good for you. Um, and she said she wants to do a benefit ride, but she only has 20 bikes. So she was wondering how people handle it. And thank you, by the way, a lot of you guys chimed in. That's awesome. I'm so pumped that all you guys are doing benefit rides like that. Um, we, do, uh, we do rides like that all the time, fundraisers all the time. We do them um, one off, so we have 50 bikes in our studio. So the way that we run it is everyone pays a set amount for their bike and everyone pays it to us and then at the end of it we write a check for that total amount to whatever the fundraiser is. Um, the promotion is huge, so you got to get people in there. So you let them know that it's for a good cause, you promote it on social media, you email them, you have them bring their friends. It's a great way, by the way, to get new people in the studio. People who are part of that cause but maybe never cycled with you before. So reach out to you know people that you know that are touched by whatever, I think you said it's lymphoma. Anyone who knows you, because you said, I think you said you've been through it, or anyone who you know has a friend who went through it, they're gonna wanna be there for that. So maybe they've never cycled before, this is a perfect chance for you to do that. So just make it clear too, in whatever promotion, promotion 